So bismillah walhamdulillah was salat was salam ala sayyid al-mursaleen muhammadin al-amin. I think I have a very special program today. Uh, you all know brother uh, Imam Isa Woods. Uh, and uh, we have uh, sister Milan. And uh, I'll let just brother Isa introduce the topic and introduce uh, the whole subject inshallah. So brother Isa, go ahead. And then I'll chime in hopefully without interrupting you. Uh, you know, whenever I feel like, uh, you know, something inspired, I'm inspired by something. Abda'u bismillahi wa rahmani wa bir rahimi da'im al ihsani, falhamdulillahi al qadim al awali, al akhir al baqi, bila tahawali, thumma salatu wa salamu sarmada, ala nabi, khairi man kad wa hada, wa alihi, wa sahbihi, wa man tabi, sabila din al haqi, a ghaira mutadi. We begin with Allah's blessed name. We praise and thank him all the same. And we ask him to send peace and blessings upon all of his noble messengers, on Jesus and his mother, on Moses and his brother, and on the final messenger of, the, of them all, the Prophet Muhammad and all the others. You know, you started your introduction with one of the openings of one very popular classical book. You know this? It's Absolutely. <laughs> That's right. The, the, I actually the, gave you the belief, some... the belief of the, uh, what is it, common folks, you can say? Right. And that's actually that statement, uh, they say, came from the prophet in a dream to that. Scholar. That's right. And you, so, know what else, you know what else came from the prophet? A wooden staff. <laughs> hey. Yes. So, so the reason I brought the uh, poetry at the beginning and the staff uh, is because it's going to come in uh, right, and right. play in our uh, presentation. Yes. So we ask a lot to be pleased with what we bring today and to increase us all in beneficial knowledge. So um, for those of you who don't know a little bit about my past, I actually come from the entertainment business. Um, a lot of people don't know this about me, but I am a uh, trained musician. Um, I played uh, electric bass guitar, electric guitar, acoustic guitar, upright bass, uh, drum set, keyboards. I sing in concert choir, honors vocal ensemble. I have a lot of training in the music business. Um, went to school for audio engineering, and I used to work for a very uh, nice uh, audio and light company here in, in uh, North Carolina. Um, I actually got to work with uh, Grammy winning engineers. Um, and, uh, you know, that was a good decade and some change of my life. Mm -hmm. I um, had a very interesting experience uh, when I named a band that I had uh, formed um, Illuminati. And at the time, I had no idea what that term meant. I didn't know anything about it. I just thought I heard it somewhere, and it was very uh, just a cool sounding name for a band to have. So, uh, so I went through some kind of tragic times in my life around that, and I ended up, um, you know, just one day getting on the internet when I had a little bit too much free time on my hand and typing in the name of our band. And boy, I ended up going down a rabbit hole there. So I eventually came upon a website talking about um, uh, that the government creates its own weather. Um, I think it was like chemtrails.com or something. This is back in like 2005, 2006. So that night I went to a friend's house and he, um, I told him about the website I had found and he was like, Hey man, I want to show you something. So we sat down and he played me a, a video called Loose Change. And it's a video that basically exposes how the World Trade Center buildings were not killed by 19 hijackers. Shake right, them 19, yeah. <laughs> Nine, The number 19. Oh, you saw my again. latest video yeah, on that. Yeah, uh, 19 Arab hijackers um, who, interestingly enough, uh, when they go to a strip club the night before the event, uh, they leave an Arabic Quran at the strip club. I don't know how many um, <laughs> how many Muslims you know who bring Arabic mushafs to uh, strip clubs. I guess they wanted to get in a Jews or two before the lap dance. But um, the uh, anyway, the buildings were clearly uh, destroyed by a controlled demolition. And of course, World Trade Center Seven is the smoking gun. You know, it collapses in on itself uh, from office office fires. So that that led me. Uh, I mean, that 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 night changed my life forever. I think um, I, I've never been the same since that day. And it it took me down a whole lot of rabbit holes. Now, 
some of the stuff we're going to talk about today, we're going to get comments in the comments section about conspiracy theories, okay? And I really am disappointed in the Muslim community when I hear this from them, especially considering that Allah says in the Quran, بَعْدَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَمَكَرُوا وَمَكَرُوا اللَّهُ وَاللَّهُ خَيْرُ الْمَاكِرِينَ they conspire and Allah conspires and Allah is the best of those who creates conspiracies is one way that can be translated. They plan and Allah plans and Allah is the best of planners. Uh, I think the Quran is literally full of Allah warning us about the disbelievers and the shayateen conspiring against us. So I, I'm very fascinated by that ad hominem attack when this subject comes up. So, uh, May Allah spend with the Allah increase us in knowledge and open our hearts to hear the truth today. So without further ado, I became a Muslim about a little over 12 years ago. And I, of course, am a student like most of your audience and, and you, Sheikh Omar, of uh, Sheikh Imran Nasser Hussein. And especially I uh, have followed his methodology for understanding the Quran for quite some time, his methodology for reciting the Quran and uh, connecting the dots, as it were. So today is going to be a whole lot of dot connecting. Let's put it that way. So I'm going to share my screen real quick, inshallah. Uh, it says it's disabled by the host, Sheikh Omar, so you got to give me permissions to share. Okay, yeah. Let me see how that's done. Share screen. Yes, sir. There you go. Now, um, as I mentioned before we started, uh, what I want uh, Sheikh Omar and Sister uh, Milan to do is uh, chime in as I'm talking, because both of you have experience uh, 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 so at least one of you has experience with the entertainment business, but for sure, you're both well read on the occult and uh, you'll you'll make some connections that maybe I didn't make today. OK, so let's go ahead and share sound and share video. All right. This so let's start off uh, with the Quran, as we should always. Um, and we're going to go to Surah Shura'a. So uh, this is the chapter called The Poets. Now, what's fascinating is that um, poets, if you penetrate just beyond that particular uh, job description, what they really are is entertainers. Um, and uh, this particular uh, chapter of the Quran, this surah, has some interesting things to say. But one of the things I like it does is it mentions the story of Moses and the magicians, OK? So we're going to be talking about the occult today. So we can't talk about the occult, except that we got to talk about magicians. So right around Ayah number 44, we get to uh, Moses and the magicians and the battle. And I want you to pay close attention to the language used here. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَأَلْقَوْ حِبَالَهُمْ وَعِصِيَّهُمْ So the magicians... And this interesting word here, pay close attention to it, and it comes in different forms in these different ayat. Mm -hmm. They threw their ropes and their staffs. Okay? They threw down their ropes and their staffs. So, and then they, of course, said, uh, by the might of Pharaoh, which, by the way, Pharaoh is an archetype for the Antichrist in the Quran, for those of you who uh, may be familiar with some of the opinions of ulama, uh, in, indeed, we will be successful. And then Allah, uh, Allah Taala reveals to us that then Moses threw, fa'alqa, again, alqa, Musa, Asahu, his asa, his staff. So, and then when he threw down the staff, in no time it devoured the objects of their illusion. Now, I've picked a few different translations here so you can see the different meanings of these words. This, this word if in Arabic is very fascinating. And uh, the one who does it, the ones who do it are yafikun. So, the, the, Word if can mean all different kinds of things, but if we just use tafsir Quran bil Quran, we, we just try to find all the places in the Quran where this word if comes in different forms. We find, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they, they, they accuse the Prophet of making it up. What is it here? The Quran, that he's uh, effectively um, inventing it as he goes. 
Well, what is the Quran? Let's penetrate beyond the mean, the, just the word here. It's a recitation. It's dhikr. The Quran is called dhikr. It's something to remind you over and over, right? It's a book. It's a kitab, okay? And then we also find the word used often uh, in the Quran, especially dealing with the issue of Aisha radiallahu anha. May Allah be pleased with her being accused of committing zina, right? So this is ifk also. So it's, it's anything uh, illicit, it's an illicit accusation is, is one way to understand it. So what I'm gonna try to do now at this point is uh, bring in another section of the Quran where you're gonna find these words, but especially now that we've talked about the magicians and what they do. I don't know if this would help, uh, but uh, the difference between kidh and ifk uh, is kidh, you still use something that's there. Like when you lie, like when you're a kid means lying, right? So right. you're still using something you like, it's like a mix between truth and falsehood mm -hmm. or, or you're diverting the question or something like if is when you're inventing something out of nothing. So just, I don't oh. know if that helps in your, in your process. No, no, no. It's very good. That, that's why I bring all these up. Cause I know you're going to, you're going to tell me some extra definitions I hadn't thought of. Okay, so, so we're dealing with the sort of the poets, and we're, we're talking about, uh, firstly, the, the issue with the magicians, and the words here, like I said, pay close, close attention to alqa, to cast something down, and asa, the staff, right? So Moses has a staff, the magicians have a staff, they both cast something, and I really like the way the, uh, the, the clear Quran translates it as, as to cast, alqa, and then this word if right, to, to, as Sheikh Omar said, to invent something out of nothing. Now, in a very, uh, at the end of this surah, Allah says something very fascinating, okay, and then we're going to kick into the evidence for all of this. So Allah says, Hal ala man shayateen. Shall I inform you upon whom the devils descend, okay? Tanazzalu ala kulli afakin athin. So they descend on every single person who is a sinful liar, or uh, I feel like I had different uh, translations highlighted here, but then they disappeared. I wanted to show you some of the, uh, there we go. So uh, depending on the translation you use here, it says uh, that the devils descend upon every sinful liar, every false one, every wicked person, every sinful person. And actually, um, there's an interesting website that your uh, audience can go to where it has the tafsir for this particular section, but it talks about how these people um, are very the opposite of the believers. They're, they're people who listen to falsehoods and they spread uh, illicit stories about uh, women who are uh, committing zina and the, they talk about uh, drinking. And it really sounds like the lyrics to most modern, modern rock and rap music. Very good point. Um, yes, exactly. And and I uh, I took a class in college called um, uh, Adab al Arabi, which is Arabic literature. And one of the first things that we ever studied was the uh, pre-Islamic Arabic poetry, which, by the way, sounds exactly like modern rap music. I mean, it is no different. <laughs> it's like them bragging about how uh, how uh, vicious they are, how many people they've killed. Uh, how much how much alcohol they consume or intoxicants they consume, all the women they've been with, how people are scared of them. It's like it's like every archetype for every every rap song I've ever heard. Um, yeah. the, okay, the, yeah. and, and you're all tying this into the shara to the poets, right? The idea, right. the entertainers. And uh, in that context, I also want to say that then there is a link between the entertainers, the poets, and the poets also being philosophers. Uh, because, you know, poet, poet poems are also a form of philosophy, uh, as Iqbal wrote in his Reconstruction of Religious Thought that, you know, poem is a, just a higher form of, uh, it could be a higher form of philosophy. But, but what Allah describes in the next verse, and they go to every valley, right? They want to test everything. They want to, it's like a type of hedonism. They want to try everything. And, and they say things that they don't do themselves. Uh, oh, okay, so, uh, you know. Uh, and then, the, right. And they say things that they don't do themselves. So this, like, this entertainment 
world of La La Land, so to say, with, with this like agenda. And, uh, and then, you know, philosophy in a sense, even modern cinema uh, takes a lot from mythology. It takes a lot from like Joseph Campbell. I don't know if you've heard of him, but he's yes, like Joseph Campbell. Yeah. Joseph Campbell, they take a lot from him. And, you know, just a lot of these religious uh, symbolism, occult symbolisms, uh, and that's just all philosophy. So it just ties into, uh, it ties into, from, from the intellectual university world into the entertainment world. So you have the intellectual elite working together with the, you could say the cultural elite or the entertainment elite. Exactly. Um... And um, I, I want to be clear here right off the bat when I'm, I'm, what I'm about to bring you is a whole lot of evidence for, for all of this um, magic uh, or sihr specifically uh, in, in entertainment, politics and, uh, and finance is um, I don't necessarily believe all these people are in communication with each other because I think this is a common uh, trope that's brought about on the internet is like You'll see these documentaries on YouTube of all the uh, movie stars and politicians making uh, one eye symbolisms and hand gestures and stuff. I don't think they're all in communication with each other. In fact, my theory that I'm going to try and put forward today is that exactly what the Quran says is because these people are affecting a theme, the shayateen descend upon all of them. It's, it's the, the real conspiracy is happening in the spiritual world. Mm. And all of these Shayatin are working together, and then they inspire these, these poets and these mag magicians and politicians and everything to do these strange things, these hand signs and gestures. It's almost like they're, they're, uh, act, they're like acts of ibadah for them. Like it, mm. it's, it's a proof of their dedication to the, to the demons. Mm. And uh, so anyway, let, let's kick in. So I'll just speak from a personal level here. There was a very famous rock band that I was into in the 1990s. I'm not going to say their name because I'm not trying to attract your audience to them, but they were very open about their interest in the occult. In fact, their drummer is the son of a Freemason. And we're, we can't have today's discussion without bringing in the Freemasons because they are very intimately involved in the occult and especially the practice of Sihar and contacting Jinn and Shayatin. So the, uh, this particular band, I'm going to bring you just uh, some photos of them and just some fascinatingly interesting things. Um, our brother and our, our, our teacher, Sheikh Dr. Omar Zaid, uh, he brings in a very interesting quote a lot of times in your, your, uh, 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 on your channel when you do a video with him, where he mentions that the highest form of magic is mind control. I don't want, don't want, I don't want you all to forget that. Now, this is this band prior to winning a Grammy. Now, I want you to take notice here. This is the four members of the band, and I believe the uh, person who's leading them in the ritual. And I want you to take note of what they're doing. So if you look closely, they're all holding a different end of a rope. Now, remember, they, the magicians cast Hibaluhum. down. With, That's the Hibaluhum. <laughs> yeah, they're ropes and they're staffs, okay? They're holding an end of a rope to form a pentagram. And of course, what are they forming it over? A eye. Mm. Okay. Now, this is a ritual that they performed, I believe, shortly around the time that their band was, was taking off. Okay. Now, um, this band, like I said, is very open about what they are into. They're very interested in a man that your audience should be familiar with at this point, Alistair Crowley. Uh, Alistair Crowley is connected to so many different things in the entertainment business, it's not even funny. Um, uh, Jimmy Page from uh, Led Zeppelin uh, used to uh, rent his, his home. Um, the Beatles put him on the cover of Sgt. Pepper, uh, one of their most famous records. Um, the Rolling Stone, uh, uh, Rolling Stones uh, had a, definitely a, a relationship with uh, the teachings of Aleister Crowley as well as um, the Beatles. Uh, some, yeah, so, so the, the Rolling Stones, the Beatles, and Black Sabbath. Now, these, these four bands alone have influenced just about every single person in rock music. Like, if you didn't listen to Black That's Sabbath, the true. Rolling Stones, Led Zeppelin, or the Beatles, like, well, who were you listening to then? All of them connected to Aleister Crowley. Aleister Crowley also connected to L. Ron Hubbard. L. Ron Hubbard, the inventor of Scientology, which, by the way, is a religion, I believe, that is used to blackmail um, movie stars. Um, yeah. If you're not familiar with the 
one of the main rituals of Scientology is called auditing, which is a person has to come in, connect themselves to a lie detector test with an auditor in their room and confess their sins effectively. Mm. Um, now, what's interesting about that is the same with the confession in Roman Catholicism is that now the priest has all of your dirt. So um, really, you should be confessing your sins to Allah. Mm. Uh, Who's I, I've seen um, those booths where the Scientologists have their little machine out and I've touched it. And then I remember just like holding it and watching that little thing go like the little the little scale. And then it's kind of interesting because you're like anybody could just make a machine go this way or that way. And it's funny how they have that as like their proof of like, OK, I'm not saying, you know, the lie detector tests that law enforcement uses are effective. But I just thought it was weird how it's like, okay, if it's going to pick up a pulse on you, you could think of something else like totally arbitrary. And then they use that as like the, some sort of like spiritual detector in a way. It's like, oh, you know, if you if it goes towards this way too much, you know, you should come with us and, and talk to us. It's it's very strange type of, you know, inferior dawa. It's like you need this little machine. It's kind of odd. So, you know, that's why they have their Tom Cruise, right, as – their little um example and then think about the movies that tom cruise has done right he's done some pretty weird eyes wide shut ah, right, Bingo, the, right? i'm gonna mention him inshallah exactly uh, so it's a little creepy you're like huh and you know it's 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 very bizarre yes alistair crowley is a very weird bizarre individual that atheists also just seem to be highly attached to and they say it's because of his, his like eccentric attitude and you're like no you just think it's like him being some type of free individual but you're taken for a ride and you know you're you're about to get rode well not only that um you have to understand uh, the the religion of the freemasonic order and 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 of course uh alistair crowley was a member of ordo templo orientalis or, 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 or orientus i can't remember how to say the end of it but he uh basically they believe in an inversion of islam okay so so you know as whatever our dean is they they invert it because the 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 shaitan doesn't create anything new like he simply says i'm going to change the creation of allah so whatever allah created he's going to change it or invert it so they, for example, believe that the God of the Old Testament is actually a type of billah, oppressor. And so, so, so Satan or Shaitan Iblis, which is also called Lucifer, is actually the, the, the one who enlightens you. And, and you know yes, this with from- Yes, his torchbearer symbolism that they put in everything, where he right. carries the torch of enlightenment. Yeah, he's Prometheus. He brings man mm -hmm. fire to teach him technology. OK, mm -hmm. so so the, the, the shaitan uh, cr creates kind of a, an inversion of everything. He just takes uh, Allah's ideas and then turns them on their head. So that's why he loves the inverted cross and the inverted pentagram. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that uh, shortly. So this is this is the band performing and very interesting, which they, they went on to win a Grammy, which, by the way, Grammys and Oscars are essentially idols. They give you an idol. That's how you know you've won. <laughs> it's really strange. Yes, yeah. it's. it's Literally so, idolatry, you know, this little golden statue that's not worth anything. And like, they say if you go to Hollywood and the pawn shops, you'll see where people have sold their Grammys and stuff or like washed up people. And it's like, it's very strange how like this little golden statue has a hold on people deeply. It's very strange. Now, um, we, we, we need to remember that uh, uh, Sheikh Omar just did a video on Circus 19. He talked about the number 19 in the Quran. I want to point out something interesting about Surah uh, Shura. It has uh, 228 verses. Um, if you count Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, which I believe should always be counted, um, which is actually 19 divided by 12. Hmm. Um, or, or 19 goes into it 12 times, I'm sorry. Um, so the... Uh, this band went on to write a very interesting album in 2019, and they have the album is is called uh, Fear Inoculum. Fear Inoculum. An inoculum is when I give you like a, I inoculate you against a virus. Okay, is the best way to think about it. 
It's the jab. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now, now, now listen to this man's lyrics. This is 2019. He put this album out. The same one who performed this occult ritual and and his own documented on film saying that he performed Aleister Crowley's rituals. The song begins, immunity long overdue, contagion I excel you. Naive I open up to you, venom and mania, now contagion I exhale you. And then he goes on to say, uh, and I'm not going to read all these so you don't get a, um, uh, a strike on your YouTube channel. So the deceiver says, he says, you belong to me. You don't want to breathe the light of the others. Okay, so we're talking about a contagion here. You don't want to get it from other people. Uh, what you say inoculated, bless this immunity. Okay, now look at this weird stuff here. So verse number two, I enumerate all that I am to you, calculating steps away from you. My own mitosis. That's growing. like the water is Shaitan. Like, you know, you follow this foot, the footsteps of Shaitan. It's in Quran. Yeah. Right. It's almost as if this man is telling you about what's about to happen in the world. The yes, social and distancing. if you notice how he says growing through division from mania, people are also becoming, you know, mania is like where you're just you're you literally go nuts. And like people are attacking each other over what they're exhaling and expelling and not only the contagion, but their words against their fellow human. So it's it's just really instead of having this sort of humanitarian aspect it's now this mania that's really divisive so mm. you can definitely see it. it's like a spell over people's minds where they are just so in with fear it you is know? a spell okay and that's my argument just like 9 11 was a spell it is cast over the people actually he mentions that here exhale expel recast my tail uh weave my allegory el uh, elegy i think is how you say that word elegy so uh anyway the point i'm trying to make is that these these people seem to have known something was coming or at least they mm -hmm. predicted it in their lyrics um so uh let's let's go i mean we've already mentioned uh hollywood uh, by the way uh, this is kind of an interesting thing i came across uh last year i thought was kind of fascinating uh and when all this uh, circus 19 mania started uh, there was a woman who in my state of North Carolina who allegedly had been in her home, you know, away from everyone for several weeks, you know, uh, and she had some groceries delivered to her. And allegedly she got uh, Circus 19 from the groceries, if, if anyone can really believe that. But look at the very strange picture she sends in of herself to the news article. Why on I earth would you be making that hand sign? I can't even imagine what would inspire you to do something like that. <laughs> Yeah, it's that it's that bullhorn, that rocker, that type of, you know, the the tongue sticking out symbolism in the hand that they do. They have right. different names for it, but we when we see it, we know, even though music has made it seem like it's a football symbol, it's this, it's that, it's 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 something more sinister where you know they use their little hand signals to communicate with each other. Okay. Now, let's get into another aspect of the entertainment business, which is uh, Hollywood. Now, um, I want your audience to consider something for a moment. Um, why is it called Hollywood? Okay, Because the Druids had trees that they used to take from called Hollywood, and the Druids used to do rituals with that wood from the Hollywood tree. That's what I've read. Might be yes. something. You're yeah. absolutely right. The druid magician uses the wood from the holly tree to cast his spell. In fact, he waves the wand in order to cast the spell. Okay. Mm. Remember the word in the Quran, alqa, to cast. So, what does what do we do with a movie? We 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 when we want to get actors. Which, by the way, mm -hmm. what is an actor when you go beyond? just the person to the meaning of their role. They're a person who specializes in self-deceit. They're able to convince themselves, or you could say channel a character, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and, and many of them will actually use that, chant that I've channeled something, a, a spirit. Yes, definitely. So Leonardo like, DiCaprio often Sounds like a that. minor type of possession. <laughs> Bingo. <know. laughs> You know, a good example is take, for example, I like Kit Harrington and Jon Snow. But when he did his last scene, he said when they took the costume off, it felt like he was dying, that he got so into the character 
that when he they filmed their last scene, he had to go into rehab because he spun into alcoholism. So he felt like he had an actual death. If you listen to these actors when they're on their final role, they're on their final take, mm. they often talk about that. So it's, you know, like when they cast, they're casting, you know, a certain persona and they often go to these retreats to focus on their characters. Johnny Depp, Leonardo DiCaprio and others have spoken about this and how they get into that that total set of like, I am this person, mm. right? And the directors and producers look for the actors who know how to do that. Bingo. Oh. They, they, they do a casting call, mm -hmm. okay? Right. Their, okay, okay. Because they're yeah. about to put a spell on you, okay? And remember, what's the, what's the highest form of magic is mind control to make you think something is happening that really isn't, mm -hmm. okay? So the magician casts his spell and they do a casting call for the liars the actors who are and especially the best of them the one who's the most adept at lying or convincing or self-deception now let's listen to a man by the name of jordan maxwell talk about this and he brings oh, up I like jordan maxwell <laughs> he's a good guy well, he's great until he starts talking about religion <laughs> oh true right yeah you know they they they, they try to uh, burn down his uh place he's been targeted quite a lot yeah he um He's an interesting character, but let's let's listen to what he has to say. It didn't take me very long to figure out that so much of what is going on, humans are not being told. We are not being told the real truth. And I'm going to, a couple of things in particular I want you to know and I want you to re remember. Nothing in this world, nothing works the way you think it does. There's always more to the story. You hear about some marriage breaking up, and the husband did this, the wife did that, and it's very obvious what happened. No, it's not obvious what happened. There's a lot more to the story you don't know. You don't know her background, her past. You don't know his past. You don't know what was going on in the family. You have no idea. So it's nothing is simple. This is why you have courts. So... I found that nothing in this world operates the way you think it does. Banks do not loan money. Governments are not empowered to protect you. Uh, police department is not there to serve you. Um, institutions of higher learning, colleges and educational institutes are not there to educate you. The entire superstructure of civilization in the Western world is a is a combination of brilliantly put together and planned, well planned schemes to direct the I to direct the minds of the people in such a way as to serve their masters. And I've known that for a long time. And one of the biggest uh, uh, tools in the hands of the masters who run this world is Hollywood. Hollywood is an incredible story. Uh, I've said this, and maybe many hearing me now have heard me say this, but I'll say it again, that <clears throat> the white man's establishment comes from Europe. And in northern, southern, well, all four, all northeast, south, and western Europe, uh, even at the time of the Roman Empire and before, that whole section of Europe that we call the center for the white man's presence on the earth <clears throat> was was quite literally ruled over uh, ancient Europe was ruled over by a priesthood called the Druids and the Druids were very they were the they were the ministers the, the priests the judges the lawyers uh, they were the religious leaders so there was a priesthood that dominated Europe it still does Europe is still a Druidic country and America is a Druidic country. And unless you understand the Druidic system, then you're never going to figure out what's going on in America and England. <clears throat> but one of the most important symbols in the Druid system was a magic wand, like Merlin, the magician with the magic wand, and also um, the orchestra leaders and conductors always have a magic wand. And you have better played the tune of the master. He directs you to play, and he directs you to stop with the magic wand. 
So you're dancing to his music, okay? Magic wands were always made out of the wood of a holly tree. It's made out of Hollywood. And Hollywood is a Druidic establishment. And the symbols, the words, the terms, the stories are designed. Think about it. Think about how Hollywood does what they do. I'm not saying they're evil. I'm just explaining how Hollywood works. You have, first of all, a story. So somebody has to write the story. All right, so now you've got a story. Now you have to give it to a screenwriter who's going to adapt that story, <coughs> excuse me, adapt that story into a screenplay. Because you can't just tell the story. You have to design it to be a movie. Now once you do that, then you're gonna to have to have the actors, very important actors. Um, because they, you're gonna need people to act the part. And, and so it doesn't mean that they, are, they, they actually have human feelings. No, no, they're being paid to act like they care, to act like they love someone, too. It's an act. And so you're paying actors to act out the part. It's an if. Part that the screenwriters have written, and you want to make sure the actors do it just right. So you have to have a director, and he's going to direct everything you say and do the way he wants it said. Then you have, of course, the producer, and he's also subjected to the executive producer who's producing the money. And that's where the banking system comes in that funds all of this. Mm -hmm. We're also involved in the occult, we'll see, inshallah. And so all of this is a whole system <clears throat> of putting together a system of a story. <clears throat> so... In a nutshell, what I find so fascinating about this and how it's tied to the entertainment business is think about actors themselves. What is an actor called? He's called a star, okay? And he's symbolized by a pentagram. Mm. And the stars come down from the sky, okay? Mm. And they enlighten the people, which is just the same as Lucifer is considered in- You also the call him idol, right? Like American idol? Yes, yeah. bingo. Now, when they die, they are given a star on the ground so that you eternally walk on it, okay? Because yeah. they're in hell. symbolizing, <laughs> 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 and, and, or they're in the underworld, you could say. Uh, actually, what's interesting is Muhammad Ali, uh, the famous boxer and Muslim, Rahimahullah, may Allah have mercy on him. He may refused Allah. to have his Hollywood star put on the ground. His is actually one of the only ones that's up high because he doesn't want people walking on the name muhammad or ali mm. so uh the star is cast down onto the earth which is as above so below which is a freemasonic mm -hmm. concept mm. which is uh, uh related again to something coming down onto the earth and 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 and, and they they represent a a cast of actors performing an if a deceit an illusion of something which is a, which is a story they're giving you dreams of demons mm. uh, the, mm. the the screenwriters and the people who come up with the stuff behind the scenes that you don't know about they're the people involved in the occult just like alistair crowley mentions that he he contacted a, a demon who looked by the way very much like we would describe a martian or an alien mm. and this demon dictated him his book the book of the law, which is do what thou wilt. And right. the summary of it. So, so all of these people involved in the cult, they're, they're, whether they realize it or not, they're contacting demons who are dictating to them a vicar, a book, just like they accused the prophet, an ifk. Mm. Okay. And think about when the entertainment business, uh, every song has a, a hook that grabs yeah. you. And it's the chorus of the song, but yet it's usually just one person singing. Well, last time I checked, the chorus is more than one, right? But the song, you sing it with the singer. And what do most people remember? They remember the hook, the chorus. Hmm. Yes. And then when you, when you go and when you go and to the concert, the whole audience sings the chorus. In fact, the, the, the uh, performer will put the mic out during the chorus and let the audience sing the chorus the choir the vicar they're making vicar together it's a it's an occult ritual it's it's a it's a bad for the shaitan effectively so 
the what was even more fascinating is that a lot of times these directors, and as uh, Sister Milan uh, so wisely mentioned, we have Kubrick. Now Kubrick is accused of actually being involved in the absolutely atrociously fake moon landing, uh, which if anyone has not looked into that, it won't. It, it just, it's not very hard to find out that that was totally and absolutely fake. But the uh, the interesting thing about that is is Kubrick puts a lot of uh, you could say uh, clues in some of his movies, um, but he did make a movie that you mentioned, which is about an occult satanic ritual that elite people do together. Uh -huh. Now, um, let's connect a few dots here so you can understand why these actors and these musicians are so uh, much pushing the agenda that's going on now. Um, in this movie, they're depicted in performing all types of uh, illicit sexual activities and especially with minors and the this is related to the uh the 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 recent um uh what's the what's the uh uh the guy that recently got busted for the for uh getting all the actors and elite people um in, involved in child uh pornography yeah that uh, old man i don't remember his name uh jeffrey epstein yes epstein so Epstein had something similar. He would invite uh, elite, um, wealthy businessmen and politicians and kings and actors to his pleasure island and uh, get them involved in, uh, in sexual activities with minors. And he was filming all of it, okay? Now, uh, take notice of what happened shortly before Circus 19. There was this thing called the Me Too movement, okay? Mm which it's not like uh, no one knew this stuff was going on, but suddenly it became okay to talk about it. And, you know, uh, any, any woman or actress could come out and say, you know, that she had been raped or abused in the entertainment business. And right. it was bringing down, you know, very famous directors and politicians. Uh, ev everyone was, uh, not everyone, but a few select people had to crash and burn to send a very clear message to all of the other actors and politicians and musicians, which is that if you don't go along with what's about to happen, we can do the very same thing to you and Alondo's best. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it was to let them all know how expendable they were because you don't get to that level, the entertainment business, the, the uh, entertain, uh, the, as a musician or an actor or a politician, except that you've done some pretty revolting things. Uh, very few people would not fall into that category, but it's who knows about those things and who can use those things to blackmail you later. But once again, it's the magicians. Now let's get into um, politics. Just as a side comment, uh, just to reinforce maybe, there's a sheikh <coughs> from Egypt, you know, after uh, all the Islamophobia, this particular sheikh, I won't take his name, but he's a, 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 is somebody I know. Um, so he was uh, in California and uh, he was trying to, uh, and he still is trying to make a movie that shows Islam in a good light that everyone can watch. And, and one of the comments he made to me is like, everyone in California lies in the movie industry. It's like, you oh, yes, yes, yes. You can't trust anyone for anything. Exactly. It's, there's it's, something about Holly. Uh, there's something about California where, just a side note to add, what you're saying is that there is a different type of. I guess the example would be like King's Landing in Game of Thrones. There's that archetype of a cesspool of vipers, of liars, of spinners, and there is something in California. I mean, that's where Bohemian Grove is, right? The redwood trees, and there's there's a lot of Masonic temples in California. I mean, yes, there's something about the people here who they lying is like second nature just to build off what you said. So I'm not surprised at all that he's coming across that. So continue. Sorry. <laughs> they are they are a fucking a theme. They are uh, uh, inventors of great lies and and uh, exactly the way the. And so are all these professors that act like prophets that they know. Right. It's so convincing that it's, uh, being a professor is also acting. I mean, really, if you do it, if you've been there, you know that that's what it is. I mean, you act like you know when you, if you if you're truthful, you you would end up saying, "Well, I really don't know." So many of the things that are, 
you know, just their concepts that you're teaching people that sound fascinating or as an alternative to religion many times. But yeah. yes, the young atheist students definitely prophetize their professors. I mean, it, it's very clear. Yeah, very clear. Yeah. Well, not, not only that, but the, the modern day uh, what's called like scientism, which is like mm -hmm. a, a religion. I mean, so it's like the 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 cosmologists and the scientists are like the priests of the modern age. They come to tell you what's going to happen in the future through their predictions and their mm -hmm. algorithms and their their scientific method. And they, they can tell you about the past, right? So they, they reconstruct mm -hmm. uh, a history from, from carbon dating and, and uh, their models of how the universe began, right? And they, they, they can teach you ethics, right? But, but science doesn't teach you ethics. It doesn't explain morals. It doesn't explain any of that stuff, but they have it. Now, uh, I just want to kick into this part by mentioning something that your audience should look up called the hidden hand. So... Um, I tried to find a good picture of it, but it didn't, it didn't come up the way I wanted to um, when I looked under Google Images. And I'm always afraid to look under Google Images and something inappropriate pop up. Uh, but it is a common practice among politicians and the elite. Were you talking about where they stuff their hand in their suit? Ah, here we go, right here. See down here on the... Uh, oh, the yes, picture. yes. Okay, now... Karl I'm Marx gonna... also has a picture of him doing that. Oh, look, they're all there. I mean, it doesn't matter. Yeah. With Napoleon, oh, there he is. Yes, there you yeah. go. You'll find plenty of. Now, I want to explain to you guys the symbol of the hidden hand. Okay. So, uh, these are two sine waves. Okay. So, these are pure tones in, in the world of, of music. Um, when, when you take a sine wave, it's just a pure tone, and you can add another pure tone to it. Okay. And when you add this pure tone to it, if that tone is of a higher or lower register, it can create a harmony. Okay. If it's at the right frequency. And that harmony produces what's called an overtone. An overtone is you didn't play it, but it's the synthesis of the two tones together. Now, Milan, you know this from some of the books you've read about, about um, uh, the, the Hegelian dialectic, okay, mm -hmm. which is the, the two opposing ideas that produce a third or the problem reaction solution. So the hidden hand is the thing you don't see. Like you, you see, or you hear, you, you know, the, you know the two tones that are being played, but you don't know that there's a third overtone there. Now take note of this very interesting thing. Um, many of you are familiar with the occult symbolism on the dollar bill. So on the dollar bill, uh, you have the the bird symbolizing uh, the politics of the country. Okay. Now the bird has a right wing and a left wing, okay? Just like we have in politics, a right wing and a left wing, okay? But what's in the center is the bird. So while we're paying attention to the right wing says that, you know, we don't like abortion and the left wing says that we love abortion, I want you to pay close attention. The bird is moving towards what? What's at the top of his head? It's the star of David, okay? And the Star of David plays a very important role, the hexagram, the symbol for the Israeli flag. In fact, yeah, and it's looking at the pyramid. Yes, and it's looking at the pyramid, which inside of that pyramid, by the way, when you connect the dots of it, it spells out Mason. So take the hexagram, superimpose it over the pyramid, and you get M-A-S-O-N, Mason, because the Mason is building... He's doing the great work of the ages, which is uh, to bring about the great architect of the universe. Okay, now we know from our Islamic tradition that this one eye at the top here is most likely referring to the Antichrist, okay, uh, the opposite of the Messiah. So they're building a kingdom for the Antichrist, which is not yet on top of the pyramid, okay. And then that's directly related to, of course, our, uh, our good uh, Zionist friends, which are so friendly with the Muslims over here. The, the bird is heading towards that. Now, it doesn't matter in politics which one you look at, whether it's the right or the left wing. They're both Zionist, without exception. I call it the two-party dictatorship. Exactly. And, and they're the, that's the two signs. But the hidden hand is where they both overlap. That's what you don't 
see mm. because you if you're just looking you know biocularly at them you see right wing you see left wing but you don't see the the thing in the middle where they overlap that's the hidden hand that's the dialectic that's what's the the magic trick happening in front of you that you don't realize there's a saying where he goes like left foot right foot left foot right foot but you're still going on the path <laughs> exactly i don't know if you've heard that expression man. Well, they play off of uh, the two hemispheres of the brain, right? And then in the center is the corpus callosum. Now, as a musician, um, my corpus callosum is probably bigger than other people's because uh, rhythm and melody and, and uh, coordination are different sections of the brain which have to communicate back and forth. So the more you... Exactly. And actually, this is an interesting thing for those of you who are doing hif of Quran, um, you're actually having to use both hemispheres of your brain when you do hif of the Quran. So if you do it at a very young age, you actually build your corpus callosum, which is the, it's the hidden hand, the, 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 the part of your brain that allows communication between the two. Now, uh, when we get a little deeper into politics and especially uh, uh, the politics of masonry, we find some interesting characters. Now, I, uh, I'm not sure how much your audience is familiar with another person who's on a dollar bill named, uh, or on the uh, money in our uh, country called Benjamin Franklin, but let's find out a little interesting fact about him. America was born in rebellion, and a few of its greatest icons made alliances with the host of hell. In the late 1700s, a group of Englishmen formed the first Hellfire Club, a fraternity dedicated to drinking, sex, and at times, ridiculing Christianity and mocking its sacred rituals members met at ruined monasteries to revel in black masses and drunken orgies. An occasional participant was the American ambassador to Great Britain, Benjamin Franklin. So Benjamin Franklin, a member of the Hellfire Club. I mean, come on. Hmm. Like, really? And they Maybe met. That's why they sent Benjamin Franklin to France when they needed negotiation, because John, when John Adams was a more prude man, he was more restricted. He was like, I'd never want to go back to that court <laughs> of the French court for what they do there. Whereas Benjamin Franklin felt right at home. And so the debauchery that was famous in the French courts, Franklin was like very familiar with there. And Franklin is actually like a very interesting writer. He can actually write pretty well. I've studied a lot about him, but I did not know that he had actually done this particular uh, frat party thing, which is quite interesting. Well, it's he, sex. He had a lot of him. strange habits, like you know, he would be nude a lot of the time. He wouldn't wear clothes. He thought interesting, you know, just a, a whole bunch of things that I don't want to get into. But yeah, he was uh, strange. But in terms of the founding fathers, right? He was like he's the thinker amongst them. The others were more practical. He's the intellectual visionary, and the the French Revolution, the intellectuals that they had created. He's kind of like the translator of that intellectual thought into America. Uh, so, but with that comes uh, the Masonic thoughts and the Masonic vision. And of so, course. And, and, and this guy's, once again, a member of the Hellfire Club. I mean, these guys could not be any more obvious. I mean, not and, to digress, but I just, you know, taking off of uh, what we what you already know and I hope inshallah some of the audience knows because I'm kind of like jumping the gun here but you know Britain as you know we talk about the transition from Britain and the role of Britain in, in this modern world right um, and namely this is the the island uh, from the tradition of the prophet that gave birth to Israel this is where the sexual revolution happened this is where the modern uh, economic system of paper money started this is, you know, all these things, rock, uh, the sexual revolution, feminism, all of it starts from England, the science, science the, the Royal Science Society, all of that. And so it goes from Britain to America, and then finally we'll go to Israel. What's interesting, in Surah Rum, you know where it says, Zahar uh, al-Fasadu fil barri wal bahar. One thing I noticed is that this Roman world, in a sense, if you uh, take this in the larger context of being Roman, uh, that you have British, which were masters of the army in the land. And then you had America that was the master of the army in the naval world, right? And the next phase where Israel becomes the superpower 
you know, who minkuli, uh, uh, then they will have elevation. They will come from every, every, every elevation. They will be the masters of the plane or the, the air. Anyway, I was just throwing that in. But uh, no, just, uh, uh, yeah. I, I guess now that I think about it, maybe it doesn't directly relate. But I was just simply showing this transition from French, British world into America is kind of like mm -hmm. indicated in the Quran. Especially when Quran talks about uh, the Judeo-Christian civilization, right? So that's like one this this world that we've become now, which is kind of like a prediction in Quran. Absolutely. Did you notice never that the, before? Did you notice that the Benjamin Franklin's sex, drugs, and rock and roll were taking place in Britain and ruined monasteries? Right. Where did we get that from? That's yes. the, the Hadith of Tamim Adari, where yes. he meets the Antichrist, yes. a Jew who's inside of a ruined monastery. Now, uh, this is all culminating because we're, we're running out of time to, to the, the Masons who built the capital of this country. Now, take note of what's there. Inside the grid of DC, and this has been built since the beginning, is an inverted pentagram. Its points actually meet at the uh, different buildings like the White House and the Washington Monument, which is an obelisk. Uh, just like the obelisk at the top of uh, Jebel Arafat that's been mm -hmm. placed there uh, by the Saudis. And of course, the Star of David, the hexagram, which is underneath it. And this is in the street plan. But what's so fascinating about this is that in the street plan, this part right here that's in red is actually missing from the pentagram. Now, why is that the case? Because the argument is because it's missing that one section that it's really not a pentagram in the streets. Well, it turns out that in the occult, the pentagram is used whenever you perform the magic ritual to contact the demon. You create a circle and then you put the pentagrams on the edge of the circle to keep the demon from coming inside. Now, Faust, uh, the book Faust, uh, which is, you know, we've all heard the phrase someone is being Faustian, right? Mm -hmm. uh, in the book, the main character contacts uh, the, the devil. And the devil tells him that the hexagram, uh, I'm sorry, the pentagram is actually uh, uh, creating problems for him. So then Faust asks, well, how, how is it that you can come in then? And he says, because it's not complete, right? There's a missing piece. So when the pentagram is there, it, it either symbolizes a good luck if it's upright or, or bad luck if it's down, according to occultists. If it's missing a piece, then that allows the demon to come inside. So the very street plan of uh, Washington, D.C., where all of our politics takes place, is actually designed in a way to create a magic ritual with the pentagram and allow the demons to come inside of it, which I think is quite fascinating. So uh, in a nutshell, uh, I've tried my best today to give you guys. Uh, I do remember a, a Muslim jinni once that I was talking to. The jinn, she told me it was during Obama's years, by the way, I was in Chicago. And she was, the jinni was looking at, don't ask me how this happened. <laughs> That's a longer <laughs> story. But the jinni was looking at the TV and she doesn't know anything like this jinni. What does she know about our world that you would assume, right? But when she saw, because I was, uh, CNN was on and the elections were happening and the jinni like looks at the TV and is like, only if you can see the amount of shayateen that are around the people on that, that box that you have right the tv she's like i could see i see all shanty they're just all shanty just the whole so i was like okay that's interesting that was about i don't know 20 years ago well what's even more fascinating the inventor um because uh, as as i mentioned earlier in this uh, talk we talked about alistair crowley alistair crowley was friends with and many of your audience members know this uh jack parsons and Jack Parsons is the one responsible for the rocket fuel that allowed uh, NASA and so many other companies to get these satellites up into the upper atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And he performed a ritual with Aleister Crowley uh, called the Antichrist ritual. And in his biography, Jack Parsons uh, mentions that he contacts a demon called Belial Dejal, who tells him that you're helping me with my work. Now, to tie this all back into the Quranic verses, I want you all to think about something. 
Remember that Hollywood casts the spell. And how does the spell cast on you? It's cast through the screens, whether it's your phone or it's your computer. The screen or is the... also the one eye. It, of course. The camera, the camera is also one eye, you know, uh, so. Uh, well, we'll do another show where we talk about the screens, inshallah. But I want you to think about something. What does the magicians in the Quran use to cast their spell and put their illusions? They use their staffs and their ropes. Now, I want all of you to go outside your house, and I want you to look at all the staffs that have been placed upright all over your city and all of the lines that have been attached to them that bring these signals into your house. Mm. Literally, the staffs are everywhere. Mm. It's a wooden staff placed into the ground from a tree, and then these cords, like your, your uh, fiber optic cables and your Wi-Fi uh, signals are all attached to these pieces of wood and they go into your homes mm. and then you connect to them and the illusion, the, the spells are cast onto the screen. Mm. What's even more fascinating about that is that uh, according to some uh, historians, the inventor of the cathode you ray... Know, uh, it's interesting. The, one of the, mean, the meanings of sahar, the sahar, which means magic, the meaning in Arabic is... Uh, to change something from its reality right mm. so it's like mm. you're looking at tv like it's real because you know it's, it's hard to remember it's fake all the time when you're watching programs and so because you have to be somebody that's an observer or a spectator of the story that's the so but anyway it's it's the ultimate change of uh, of, of, of reality in, in a sense, this this whole movies and films and TV and all that. Anyway, something that came to my mind. So the, yes. So so the 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 their spells are able to be cast onto us through the staffs that are carrying the ropes that bring the signal into your your home. If you mm -hmm. penetrate beyond just the literal meaning of the, the verses of the Quran. Not only that, but I want you to think about money. Now, money, uh, if we, we get into the, the economic system, uh, is, is worthless. It's fraudulent. It's mm -hmm. utterly haram, as Sheikh Imran Hussein Hafidahullah always tells us. It has no value other than a belief that we have about it. So it used to be backed you know, uh, a long time ago by, by gold, but that's no longer the case. It's the petrodollar today. But Ask yourself this, uh, how is new money created and why can't you and I create money? So banks are institutions which are allowed to take the paper, print the Masonic symbols over them, and then they are allowed to determine that these are worth money. And then you and I accept it. What do they call these bills? They call them currency. Mm. And you can use your plastic to charge your card and then through the currency, if you get enough currency, you can manifest an object with it. Mm -hmm. I take my mm -hmm. currency, I go to the store, I buy the laptop, I buy the car, I buy the piece of fruit. So it's a magic trick. You're taking currency, an energy that you give it through to a, uh, with a belief that you have, and you're manifesting objects with it. And it's all very... these, and even in paper money, these uh, you know these symbols that you carry in your wallet when you're carrying the paper money, this is a form of like an anti tawiz or like an it's a, it's a minor it's a minor magic spell with right. these symbols. No, it is magic, it's pure and simple. Uh, in fact, the whole system, uh, the entertainment, the politics, the 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 economics, uh, it's all based on magic. It all comes from uh, what's interesting, and we, we've talked about this before, is, is Kabbalah, right? So yeah. the, mm -hmm. the, the mysticism that comes out of uh, the Jewish, uh, Jewish tradition. Uh, what is the root in Hebrew of, of Kabbalah is Kuf, Bet, and Lamed, mm. which is the root of the name Kabil. Mm. And as Dr. Omar Zaid points out in his book, Kabil is the one who's cursed by God to become eff effectively a pirate. He has to live off of the believers, mm. right? And uh, he, he, the, the earth won't produce for him. So the earth produces, the rain falls for the believers, 
right? And so we work, and then the pirate, Pa Beal, and his tribe, they live off of us. They're like parasites. Well, think mm -hmm. about each and every one of these institutions, whether it's finance, uh, politics, or entertainment. None of these people produce anything, actually. All of them live off of the wealth of the working class, quote unquote, believers, the people mm -hmm. who are tilling the earth and planting the plants and, and manufacturing the, the, the timber to build your homes with. And then these politicians and these economic people and these actors and musicians, they just suck money out of them. They produce nothing except lies and illusions and magic tricks. But as the, the Quran says so clearly, in the Qaeda, Shaitani kana da'ifa. So the plans and, and, and the, the magic that they use on us, the, the, I guess the conclusion of all of this is that it only works because we participate in the illusion. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. we're, we're in Babylon, effectively. And this is uh, just a reminder to myself and all of us that we have to get out. And that there's really no way to change this system. Uh, it's completely from its beginnings to today. It, uh, it's all uh, the root of it. The tree is, is evil. And the evil tree produces no good fruit. Mm -hmm. And We've even seen some of our good ulama try to get involved in politics. And unfortunately, just like the believer who goes to Dajjal thinking that he's a believer and Dajjal deceives him with his, uh, with his, uh, his abilities, uh, we've seen even good people that we know are believers be deceived by this system. And uh, I guess I'll end with a joke. Hmm. Um, we all want to see the right person as the president of the United States. So let's say we get the right person. Let's say it's you. Your first day you go to the White House and they say, come on in. Come on into the White House and let's show you around. So they they show you, you know, your uh, your rooms over here and your children will sleep down there. And hey, you want to go see the movie theater downstairs? And you're like, yeah, I'm president of the United States. I, I got a movie theater. So you go downstairs and they say, well, there it is. Uh, go, go down. Uh, there's your spot in the front. So you go down and, and you sit on your, your spot in the front and you're like, yeah, president of the United States. Got my own movie. <laughs> Suddenly the door shuts. And the lights turn off. And there's a movie playing all of a sudden. It's Dallas, late 1960s. President John F. Kennedy's driving down the road. The people are very happy to see him. Suddenly, the car takes on an unknown road that no one's expecting. And then suddenly, from different angles, boom, 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 you see Kennedy's brains blown out. The lights come back on. And a man walks into the room, puts a stack of papers down in front of you, and he says, this is your agenda for the next four years. If you don't like it, that's what we did to the last guy that didn't like it. Mm. So that's effectively what we're dealing with, whether it's entertainment, politics, finance. There's really no way to change this. The mm. system itself is the problem. It doesn't matter who you put in it. So what's the answer, Sheikh Omar? The answer is the Jamaat. The answer Join is the, the Jamaat. Yes, have an Amir, have a Shura, and find your way to Hijra. Get out Absolutely. of the cities before it starts to collapse. Which is well, I've bored, I've bored you guys to tears with my uh, information. Today, no, so it was anything very, like amazing. Well, very amazing. We very amazing. We could have definitely gone this. even Maybe deeper. We yeah. need to do this again, but I'd like to end with your permission, uh, Imam Isa, if we can have the sister say a few words at the end on commenting on your. Uh, on your points. Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. Bismillah, go ahead. Yes, yes. So essentially, another very interesting thing about the money is I don't know if you've ever done it with a couple a couple different dollar bills before they started changing the designs, but if you fold them right, you can actually see the two towers and then have and something's crashing right. into it. I've actually mm -hmm. done that. Uh, maybe this is a little bit awkward, but my father um, he is a mason. Um, he doesn't really talk to me that much. But... So is my uh, my uh, uh, my grandmother was an Eastern star, the female version of the Masons. And then her brother was a master Mason. Wow. So that's probably why we can, you know, like we're very familiar with it and patient, you know, because 
some people might be asking, why is it important to know these things? Well, it's important because we have to understand what those groups and institutions are thinking and what they want, right? And who do they use to influence us? And why we have to kind of reject what it is they're offering on the table, right? Once you see someone trying to do something to you through their illusionary games, their mind control, through their actors, through their music, through whatever it is they're baiting you with, once you identify it, it's like, no, I'm not your puppet. I'm not, no, I'm out of here, right? So there's there's a big example we can take from the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, with his strength and all of our prophets provide us an excellent example of how you resist. That's one reason why if you really look at Job, how he suffered and endured today, what are they trying to do? You can't go to school. You can't do this. If you don't have this title, we won't value you. If you don't submit, you won't get this. So it's really essential that we don't overly worship the titles, the institutions, you know, and their forms of banking. Just the fact that they use spider webs on the money should kind of get you, you know, and the debt, how it traps you. And the spider comes to, you know, feed on what it's wrapped. You know, people wow. say I'm drowning in debt. I'm drowning in college debt. It's like people, they get like, they don't have the patience to see it. Like, oh, that's, this is, this is all, you know, too, it's too much for me. But it's like, no, don't panic. What you do is you see it just like if you see a dog has its hair standing on its back. You figure either I need to calm this dog down or I need to go away, right? So you don't just stand there. You have to have a plan. And I would also argue, you know how we got into the mode of the professors being the new prophets and such? Well, if you notice in California, a lot of these very liberal godless people who have been kind of indoctrinated, they have a huge disgust for religious people who are rural and who have traditional values. And, you know, if you start to see the pattern here of like how they are just really disgusted, right? Like, oh, they they don't have this education. They don't have this title, you know? They, they had, they're the farmers. Land doesn't vote. Why should they have a say? We here in the city produce the, the digital economy, right? Which is operated through the fiber webs, as you said, through right. the ropes, through the digital sphere the web is ropes so, and that's how just yeah. salsa was by the way you know yes that's, not, not uh, only that but, but on, on the you dollar know, the just salsa a, a, a brother recently showed me uh we were discussing actually he's the admin of my telegram uh telegram is it tele, telegram a telegram group june i think it was him he showed me the narration where one of the words used to describe just salsa was somebody like who wears a clothing with a lot of like hair or ropes coming out of it. Mm-hmm. And, and so, you know, so this is like the network, right? And, and the Quran also mentions the Ankabut, right? The, the, the house of the spider. Mm-hmm. And you always see this, like the web over the world, the fake time that they have, the artificial time they have over the world, the, the fake lines they have over the world. And then just this, this whole worldwide web. And then you have the economic system. Anything that has seems like a, a, a casted web <laughs> this could, be, could be a problem. Right? Well, yes. Uh, on the, yes. Uh, on the, the dollar bill, actually, you mentioned that, that, that there's spider webs all over. There's actually a spider on the dollar bill. And the dollar bill is actually uh, has a three different owls on it as well. Because the owl is the predator who can see in the dark. Mm -hmm. So his prey doesn't realize that he is being uh, uh, preyed upon and Mm -hmm. and, and is unexpectedly uh, captured and killed. Right. So they see in the dark. And when um, uh, they're very quiet, too, when they fly. I mean, they're very quiet. mm -hmm. Just snatch you really quick. I mean, Minerva of the Greek, the Greek pagan goddess. Right. She her symbolism was the owl. And what do they use for education? It's the owl, right? The old wise owl. Because, right. you know, I remember that when I was wise. Yeah. Yeah. When we were small, like when I was in what, first, second grade, that was a very common symbol for education. Well, not only that, when you graduate, what do you get? You get a square on your, your head and it 
turn. So the square is your 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 you get a a master's degree, right? So this is mm-hmm. all related to masonry, by the way. Mm-hmm. The square yeah. is the, the, the is the, the the perfect square symbolizes the perfected man. Um, the uh, the education is the indoctrination. Actually, uh, it's just like the different degrees you get in masonry: your first degree, second degree, third degree. But the the mm-hmm. master's degree. And actually, uh, what's interesting is when you become a doctor, you get the magic letters DR before your name and PhD after your name. And these hypnotize the person when they see them into thinking that you're a credible person to speak. When in reality, Mm -hmm. you could be an idiot who's just been (laughs) and can't critically think. But the letters letters are are magic, word magic. The moment someone yes. sees them. Well, spelling, right? Spelling. spelling what are you right. doing? You are <laughs> spelling a <the> word. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And depending on how you arrange the letters, the mind is 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 has been uh, trained to to recognize certain patterns and then immediately go into a, a state of hypnosis. Like I'll give you an example. Just recently, I complained to the local masjid about all of these uh circus 19 restrictions they have, and I was giving them different arguments why it doesn't make sense for us to pray like this or have these restrictions by the and way if, if you two come to buffalo we don't have those restrictions in our masjid. right right my my message either but this was another local message okay uh but anyway so the at the end of the day their argument was simply this well doctor says doctor says so doctor says it's like he's he <laughs> it's you know it's appeals to authority effectively but who produces the authority? Look at the caduceus, right? The medical symbol. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's a staff with snakes going up it, right? And mm-hmm. that comes from the, the uh, it comes from the, um, the uh, Baphomet. It's on the stomach of the Baphomet, the half man, half woman, uh, androgynous God with the goat head of, of the Freemasons and the, the Satanists. And because also they, the, that messenger of Zeus who used to give deliver messages to all of the deities when they're kind of acting up right he would go fly to them tell them to stop it and if they didn't they would he would go back to zeus hermes and then tell them what they did you know and they would get in trouble so it'd be like think if you think about the connection of like deliver the message do what zeus says or you're going to be in trouble with the lightning bolt right you're going to get zapped you're going to get fried you know there's something there's so many things that they used to communicate right in front of you that people just really mock at because they mock at it and take it for a joke it's allowed to continue i think someone should do a funny social experiment where they just put on a lab coat and just start saying the most ridiculous things and say trust the science and many people say if you have to trust the science it's not science it's propaganda (laughs) because science is supposed to always doubt so if you're saying trust me instead of doubt me well then you're doing something else than science supposedly right so it's really interesting. I mean, somebody's really got to create a parody where you just, you know, walk around and, you know, pretend to be this uh, all-knowing doctor in a, in a white lab coat and see what people will take, you know, if you say. I mean, just look at what the 1930s produced with their medical experimentations on people. I yeah, mean, especially in this environment of the fear, medical field. In this mm-hmm. environment of fear, it's even easier to get people to comply. Oh, yes. Just look at Australia. I mean, they're just brutalizing people, you know, fear constantly. Fear is a huge, like, when you're afraid, you seek help anyways. And fear is part of magic. Because when Allah Prathana talks to Musa, Musa, so when Musa felt fearful, Allah said, when you're facing magic, you're not supposed to be fearful. And, exactly. and, and what the jinns do, if you like look at the jinn cases and the rukia cases, you know, they're at night, they have nightmares. It's all about creating fear, right? It's, it's, it's the, the fear that makes them comply. And so we have a exactly. society right now that the fear is being, just like after 9-11, they created fear to make society mm-hmm. comply with certain things. Now there's another new state of fear to make people comply again. And so it's, a, yeah. it's the same old tricks. Well, what's actually happening, and, and I appreciate when Dr. Omar Zaid said this, um, he said, you know, that one of the passages of the Bible is, you know, Jesus saying, oh, my people come out of her, referring to Babylon. Mm. What's actually happening to the believers right now, all of us, those who are actually trying to have integrity in our faith, is that the situation is being 
created where we will have no choice but leave this place if we mm-hmm. want to maintain our faith. Yeah. And and that's actually a good thing. It'll actually cause every one of us to uh, it become incredibly creative. Uh, it'll mm-hmm. force us to do the things that we should have done all along, form the communities that we should have done, uh, create the uh, create the um, the eco- the eco- economy inside of the economy that allows us to survive. Um, mm-hmm the uh, and that that's effectively what it's doing to us it's actually a really positive thing and i think that's that's one of the things we have to focus on especially uh on shake omar's channel and, and everything is that we we talk so much about what's going wrong but we need to understand that the prophet Islam said a fitna laylatul mudlima the dark night will come over humanity and it'll separate humanity into two groups a group of nothing but iman without any nifaq so pure faith with no hypocrisy and another group of pure nifaq with no iman, pure hypocrites with no faith. And so that's effectively what's what we've, you know, and Alano's best uh, hypothesized about some of these hadiths. That's what we're experiencing right now, the dark night, Laylatul Muslima, which by the way, uh, Sheikh Omar in the Quran is always connected to the people of Lut, right? Mm-hmm. It's uh, whenever that word comes up in the Quran, uh, right after it's talking about the people of Lut. So we all know what's happened before all the Circus 19 and what's currently happening with it. Uh, by the way, another interesting fact, uh, the, the, Mason, the Masons and some aspects of the Jewish community, they believe that God is actually a hermaphrodite. It's yes. man yeah. and woman. Yeah. Whereas pure Tawheed teaches that God is neither man or woman. Yeah right yeah. exactly so 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 much of this uh transgender stuff that's going on right now uh and being pushed on people is actually coming from this yeah it used country. to be gays and now it's going like to the other genders like transgender and it's like getting to the next level well they're gonna create i mean we have to be sensitive the way we talk about it just because you know of censorship but yes. they want depopulation <laughs> you know they they're gonna change and it's coming everywhere it, it's gonna be a difficult time and that's why I focus a lot on masculinity and mothers being nurturing. We have to hold on to really tight, as the prophet said, hold on to your, your faith like a rope. You know, a better, not the bad rope, the good rope, right? right. <laughs> so it, it's going to, as someone who's in California, you, you're saying like, okay, so they're going at you through the digital realm. What do we say about the spelling, right? About the ropes and the cables and such. They're coming through the apps that are the new web masters. So we have to expand. We have to really just get ready because they're going to make it very hard because they're coming for the lambs, as they say. And we have to really be fortified and mothers have to start paying attention to their children. And we got to really revolutionize the family. We got to get back to the roots of, you know, not being consumerist materialists and then we have to focus on the family very hardcore we have to be guardians of our of ourselves and our religion because they're coming you know yeah what's coming in california is coming for everywhere right right that's where the cultural elite is so what goes there then comes you know filters down exactly okay thank you guys i'm a little late but i still have to go Mashallah. All right. We'll another great. program. Yes. Inshallah. Definitely. Okay. Yeah. And please, uh, 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 we'll, we'll put a link to uh, Milan's channel because uh, she puts out a, a lot of really good content. Right. Can you please introduce your channel? Oh, yeah. So my channel is a Milan Philosopher's Corner. Um, I, I dig into a lot of different topics, you know, cooking. I have a couple like all types of kind of stuff on there i dig in philosophy history military history comparative religions um a lot of hadith i, I love hadith so you're gonna see a lot of hadith stuff on there but a very unique diverse channel i mean you never know what i'm gonna upload i remember this. watching you when you were reading quran you were not muslim yet and you're reading Sutul jathia i think and i was like that's an interesting woman's perspective on a non-muslim perspective and of course being female and then I saw it like transition and then I saw you in niqab and then uh, <laughs> yeah. Mam Isa mentioned you. I was like, oh, well, that is, you know, so good. Sheikh Omar, your wife wears niqab, right? Yeah. 
Yep. And all, all of my friends, all of their wives were niqab. <laughs> most of them are people who converted to Islam. <laughs> nice. Nice. Mashallah. Yeah. So, okay. Thank you. Jazakumullah khairan. Uh, may Allah benefit all of us and everyone that views this. And please forward this to other people because I think what we talked about today is very, very important. And so if you if you forward it and they learn something, then you get the reward for that, inshallah. All right, inshallah. Jazakumullah khairan. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaykum